a warm Brooklyn welcome for Lee Carrico! entailed a big cultural shift when I moved here. We have a certain tradition in my family that I'm not sure translates beyond maybe the county that I live in, but you, you can let me know. And this tradition is the group photo around the casket. <laughs> do, do you have that? Do you have that? It's a really big thing in my family. And, you know, I, I've always found it pretty bizarre. You'll be standing there, maybe you're over there, you might be crying, you might be really feeling the grief, you know? Or you might be telling a funny story, oh, I remember that, yeah, that was so funny. Here comes Aunt Maggie with the camera. And you're like, oh, oh no. She's like, honey, get over there by my mom. We're gonna, we're gonna take a picture, make a picture. You make pictures in the South. And so you're like, to do this, but there you go, you're herding around the casket, and there's this little matter of the posing. What are you supposed to do? Like, what's it? You don't want to do your spring break, you know, that's just really not appropriate in this situation, but at the same time, you don't want to get all 1895 about it, where everybody's like standing there like, you know, that, eh, who wants to be seen like that? So what ends up really happening is a collective grimace. Like, everybody's kind of like, <laughs> and, you know, you have to make sure that the face in the trough is visible. So, and I figured something out about this. I think it's the family equivalent of a yearbook photo of a teen. Because I think it's like somebody dies every so often, so you get this kind of semi-annual picture of everybody, and you, you, you piece it together by who was in the box. It's really bizarre. And then you always have that phenomenon where they're like, oh... She looks so pretty. Does anybody dead look pretty? Like, really? I'm, I'm always like, I think she looks like marzipan. <laughs> but that's just me. So, you know, we're really not comfortable with death in our society and all that, so don't talk about it, whatever I do. There's another funny thing about my family, which is I had a great uncle, not making this up, his name was Bent Dick. <laughs> True story. He was my grandmother's uncle, and evidently around World War I, that name already had the connotation that it has today, because he really hated his name. And it was not short for anything. His name was not Bentley Richard. It was Bentick. So when he went to go to the military right around World War I, he was like, ooh, I am not dealing with the grief that comes with this name in the Army. So when he filled out his paperwork, he wrote B. D. Milburn. And the officials came back, of course, and they said, you can't do that. We need your whole name. So he was like, hmm, what am I going to do? So he wrote B. Only. D. Only. Milburn. Nice. So when his dog tags came back, and for the duration of his military career, he was Bonely Don. <laughs> yeah. Which he preferred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you one other thing. Um, I work in healthcare. It's a very strange job that I have. <laughs> healthcare! <laughs> Can I hear from the speech pathologist? Both of us. Nice. Um, so I used to share an office in Kentucky with this lovely therapist named Amy. And Amy was just this charming, very sweet, southern belle kind of girl. You know, never confronts anybody, whatever. Just very soft and gentle. And because she worked in the rehab side, her patients would be wheeled into her twice a day. Same, same time, next session. So one day they wheel in Mrs. Jones. It's right after lunch. She's wearing the usual uniform of the giant baggy sweater and sweatpants. And she wheels up to the desk and suddenly Amy realizes they must have had chili for lunch today. Because Mrs. Jones has a kidney bean stuck to her pants. So Amy decides she's going to help her out and clean it off. So she goes in for the flick. Bing! Guess what? It's not a kidney bean. Oh. It was attached. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So 
what ensued was like, whoo, humiliating for both involved, you know? And I get to think about this. I'm like, man, if they're all the way over here, at what point are they becoming a tripping hazard? You know, because you really got to think about that with the elderly. You know, you one wrong move, you're gone. So, I don't know, I just started thinking about like prosthetic stuff or whatever, and maybe they could try like straps and solo cups, and if they get down that far, you just park them in there, maybe a little double-sided tape, and the puppies aren't going to go anywhere. Really. So, that's your public service announcement for tonight. If you're aging parents or whatever, if you need to consider that, just give it a thought. Because, uh, you know, those injuries are always serious. <laughs> anyway, that's all I had for you. This was my very first time doing this. Yay. Yay. Yay.